The Roundtable is powered by Patreon, including supporters like Blackfoot Ferret. Much like us over here at the Roundtable, Blackfoot Ferret likes to indulge in the marvelous world of theories. Ferret's completely dedicated to finding out one thing, the truth. You'll find theories on Steven Universe, Star Wars, Five Nights at Freddy's, and whatever else pops into his brain. We highly recommend checking out the follow-up to his Rose 8 Pink Diamond theory, going in-depth and correcting any mistakes in his original video. Folks, this theory is a wild ride, and without a doubt, one of the most in-depth ones we've ever seen. You'd be doing yourself a huge disservice if you didn't check it out. Watch it, subscribe to Blackfoot Ferret, and let them know Roundtable sent you. Link in the description. If you want to support us and have your own brand shout out on the channel, join the Roundtable on Patreon. Shoutouts are our highest tier. Now on to the show. Hey yo, I'm Austin Glox, this is Crystal Clear, the show dedicated to discussing and breaking down the world of Steven Universe. As a series that draws inspiration from many manga and anime, Steven Universe has a lot of staples from the medium, but this especially holds true for its villains, the Diamonds. Their role in the story, their position in the homeworld's hierarchy, the way they portray themselves, even down to the way they all look, give off the radiance of a shonen antagonist. So like all Shota antagonists, it's not out of the realm of possibility we'll have an epic face-off against the diamonds at some point in the series. Thus, when that time comes, we have to ask, how can they be defeated? Do the Crystal Gems even stand a chance? Usually, their encounters with Homeworld Gems fail to result in an outcome in their favor. It's difficult to think those who barely held off against Lapis' Water Clones would score victory against a diamond with ease. Needless to say, they definitely have the work cut out for them. Now, Steven Universe isn't a show that's all about the action. It is very much a character-driven show and prioritizes as such. The writers tend to focus more on teaching a lesson that viewers at home should learn about how to be a human being, loving yourself despite your flaws, dealing with internal and external conflict over having balls-to-the-wall fight scenes every few episodes. That's why we have episodes of Sadie's band landing a gig overseeing Lars's amazing space adventures. Yes, I'm still salty about that. The writers and storyboarders have also said on the Steven Universe podcast that they try to keep the action sparse. So it holds more weight for when it does transpire. That if they crammed fight scenes to every episode, they'd lose their punch. I can see their intent with this, although personally I find the fight scenes we do get are a bit on average. We have some great ones, some less than favorable sequences, but more often than not, they're alright. Very hype inducing to watch at first, but nothing extraordinary to write home about on rewatches. But, as with most problems I have with the show, I'm pretty sure this has more to do with the super tight time frame the universe has to storyboard episodes than a testament to their ability at creating captivating fighting sequences. When you only have a few weeks to illustrate what's going to become half of an 11 minute episode, you're going to have to draw fast. Really fast. You're more than likely going to have to condense the vision in your head for epic set pieces. I'm getting off track. I mention all this because action scenes aren't all the show features in small doses. The diamonds are also featured in small doses. Having a very small number of appearances 5 seasons and 5 years into the show's run, yet an altercation between our main cast and lovable characters against these tyrants seems inevitable. To ease any fears, I don't believe they'd rush or give a lackluster battle either. Ocean Gem and Super Watermelon Island had a significant portion of their runtime dedicated to straight, intense action. If they can do that for two relatively lower level threats compared to the Diamonds, the Gem Matriarchs will absolutely be show stealers in their face off. Being massive in scale with immense power, what do the Crystal Gems have that ensures coming out on top? Well, we've already been shown their physical and emotional weaknesses and the person capable of taking them down by exploiting those vulnerabilities. Steven! Didn't see that coming, right? It's true that the diamonds are the strongest gems in existence, discounting any possible fusions. But Steven is a secret weapon, being half human, half gem. This grants Steven certain advantages that normal gems lack, but it's also a double-edged sword. An organic body means Steven's incapable of regenerating, as confirmed by the Crewniverse. We'll likely never see it in the show for obvious reasons, but if Steven were to poof, or his equivalent of poofing, he can't reform. He'd just be gone forever. A big pile of guts and an unresponsive gemstone in his place. Okay, that last bit isn't confirmed, but I could only imagine it'd be that brutal. I digress. Steven's whole existence is a loophole in gem kind. Couple that with the abilities passed on from his mother, Rose Quartz, and you have someone the world has never seen. Someone extraordinary. Someone who, if they desired, could be Homeworld's greatest reckoning. 
someone who matches all the diamonds and believe it or not there's a strong case that we've been shown all of the powers Stephen will use against each particular diamond to defeat them and through both demonstrating and reverse engineering with the corruption attack we do have a good grasp on all three of the diamonds powers so why don't we start with the diamond we know best yellow diamond as we know she sports more of an electric based elemental power or electrokinesis including raw unfiltered gem destabilization we on the round table theorized long before the trial aired that yellow diamond had these abilities but we can infer through yellow's outrage that gem destabilizers were modeled after her abilities replicating the purpose in each weapon although yellow has more freeform control as seen by her cutting through the surface of the courthouse in a perfect diamond shape show off now we're not sure if yellow diamond actually has a gem weapon of her own although i've always advocated for her sporting a sword but as op as this destabilization ability seems we've already seen the counter to it we discussed this before but in jailbreak steven was able to bypass both the containment cell generated by a similar electricity to yellow diamonds and take a gem destabilizer head on they only seem to make him a little bothered but it doesn't disable him at all we know the cruniverse loves her foreshadowing so I'm positive what we saw here was alluding to how Steven could take on Yellow Diamond. He can tank her electrokinesis, resisting the, of the rice natural, response to poo. From there, a quick swing of Rosa's sword, or a strong enough attack from a third party, let's say Alexandrite, would ideally cause enough damage to defeat Yellow Diamond. Bye bye Yellow! Now, it isn't all just physical. Yellow Diamond has an emotional weakness as well. How much she really cares. Yellow tries to come off as uncaring, cold and calculating as if she's trying to conduct herself as someone else wink wink but deep down she does care about pink diamond about blue's mental state and likely about any insecurity she has even if she refuses to acknowledge it steven's already seen her in an emotionally vulnerable state so it isn't far-fetched she would attempt to appease her but come off as intentionally exploiting her mental state and throwing her off her game triggering a meltdown that leaves her unfocused and even easier to take down but enough about yellow let's move on to blue diamond the depressed golf girl of the diamond authority blue diamond is actually the trickiest of the diamonds to deal with going hand in hand with her attitude blue diamond sports pathokinesis the ability to affect the emotions of those around her as seen in the trial when frustrated at Steven's answers to her investigation, a raw surge of emotion radiates among the courtroom and affects everyone surrounding her, causing them to indulge in her emotion. It's unknown if Lars failed to be affected due to being human or the bubble that encased his head, although if I had to wager, it was due to him being human. Blue Diamond's core also has been consistently shown to possess water and ice elemental based abilities, which I would deduce originates from their diamond. After all, her aura and your mother in mind during the diamond attack did have the consistency of liquid so let's just make an educated guess blue diamond's grasp over others emotions is one of the few things steven is susceptible to as he was shown to be affected by blue diamond's wave of emotion and due to his empathy powers was able to link with her mind and feel her grief from across the world now sensing the emotions of a gem communicating with them telepathically isn't exclusive to blue diamond we've seen steven do this before with the lighthouse gem and the cluster I see two solutions to Steven defeating Blue Diamond. One, a simple and forward approach to just talking to her, appeasing her and trying to get her to back down. Hey, she took a liking to Greg after conversing with him, and while she definitely is the most emotionally unstable of the diamonds, she also appears to be the easiest one to talk down once you know the right words. Above all else, Blue Diamond is strangely diplomatic, which is ironic, but kind of makes the fact she can change the emotions of others all the more dope. But this means she's approachable and somewhat fair? I mean, we know how much she loved Pink Diamond, yet still gave Steven, or Rose, a fair trial, despite being the one who shattered Pink Diamond, letting Zerticon make her case even after botching it a few times. But let's say communicating verbally doesn't work. Well, there's one more possible trick up Steven's sleeve, but it's something we haven't exactly seen before, so this still remains just a theory. What if Steven was able to quite literally change her mind, override her emotions? This is kind of just basic speculation, but Steven's optimism may have a greater impact than we realize. Or, a less exciting but simpler concept, just like how happy thoughts control the speed of levitation and descent, perhaps flooding his mind of positive emotions, the people and things that make him happy 
will block Blue Diamond's path of Kinesis. That would be a great triumphant moment of Steven picking himself off of the ground and charging through Blue Diamond's aura. As he recites out loud everything and everyone he's fighting for, it may sound a bit cheesy, but it's the kind of cheese I'm all here for. Finally, there's White Diamond. While her powers aren't confirmed as of yet, we definitely can safely deduce she sports mental kinesis. Mental manipulation, tampering with the mind. This is how corruption displays amnesic symptoms. Likely why Pearl can't speak freely about the diamonds, why her body covers her mouth involuntarily. I really feel like all this is just tipping the iceberg. As a big bad threat, there may not be any limits. If desired, I can see White Diamond having complete control of the mind, causing others to do her bidding, brainwashing them. Hell, I did a theory on White Diamond possibly controlling Connie, with some possible elaborate foreshadowing. Check that out if you haven't. Plus, come on guys, her gemstone is in her head. The writing is on the wall, they made it obvious. As for a possible elemental ability, it seems she also shares the same light, energy-based abilities Pearl has shown off in battle. That's definitely the impression the aura surrounding her gave off, very twinkly like a star, plus white diamond, white light, makes sense. The key to the throning white diamond would once again be an extension of Steven's telepathy powers, more specifically, his ability to enter the minds of others. Combating white diamond would be a literal mind game, and we already saw what Steven can do in the mindscape thanks to the episode Kiki's Pizza Delivery Service. While yellow and blue would set up some great action scenes, a battle within the mind would allow the universe to go all out with absolutely no limitations. It sets both White Diamond and Steven in an equal playing field, and it would just be an absolute banger. I'm getting giddy just thinking about it. Aside from curing corruption, this is what I firmly believe all the mind-related escapades of Steven's powers have been leading up to. Steven will get to show what makes him, Earth, and all of his friends special. Not just on the outside, but on the inside, while simultaneously causing the Diamond Authority to collapse. Sure, we may see it having a good two seasons or years from now, but we'll see it nonetheless. Finally, two other things could assist in defeating the diamonds. One, the breaking point or something similar. We haven't seen the last abysmith, and even after everything's resolved, that whole conflict was around a disagreement, a moral gray area and all that jazz. Bismuth isn't necessarily in the wrong for wanting to shatter gems and I can see her devising a new weapon in the future. Whether or not it'd be used in the diamonds, I doubt it, but you never know. The other thing is music. It's a huge part of the show, and one of Steven's interpretations of the diamond attack was a song, which could have been playing the seeds for a future plot point. Perhaps creating some sort of song could contribute to finishing off the diamonds. Although on paper, I'm not the biggest fan of the idea, I still wanted to put it out there. That's about everything for this one. Now, I did include Pink Diamond because she dead, but on the chance she is alive, ugh, or we learn more about her powers in great detail, I'll be sure to make a follow up to this video. I'd also update if we learn the diamonds have additional powers, or if one of these provided solutions are ineffective. But for now, what do you guys think? Is there another way you guys can see the diamonds going down, down, down to the bottom of the sea? Let us know in the comments, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at RoundTableVids and Fox, or on Stardust, link below. If you want to help us grow, join the roundtable on Patreon. Get access to perks, updates, shoutouts, and have your name featured at the end of the video like all these wonderful people. Also, swing by our store and pick up some merch, maybe? Links to everything in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please sort of like, share, subscribe to the roundtable for more Steven Universe content, and hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop of all things Steven. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Ostrich Vox, out.